Okay, I finally got my camera. Okay, I had a little trouble with it the other day, trying to figure out the camera and getting it working. Had trouble with the mic, but I think I got it all that solved. So, we're working on the uh, Moss Creek log cabin right now. So, right now I've got all the shingles done. All the shingles are done. All my logs, door frames. I got a bunch of stuff over there which you probably can't see. Let me see if I can get you out there to see it. In the back corner here, you can see all the log pieces. Okay. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to walk you through what I plan on doing. Okay. I've got the front part of the house here. Your door, two windows. Now this smoother part here without any spots in it, phases out, of course. Now on the back side, you have a groove that runs along the top, right here, which is for the uh, second floor, which will slide right into here. And there's a lip down here on the bottom edge, which also has, let's see if I can get you in there. Uh, well, you can see that, but you can see the edge right here. And then on the bottom edge here, I don't know if you can see it too well, but there is a little lip right here where it'll sit on this bottom piece right here. Okay, so get back out here. All right, that's good. Now, I plan on using some strip wood right here, which I get from Real Good Toys, or you can pick it up at Hobby Lobby. And I think Menards also carries stuff this small in their hobbyist section in the the uh, tool department. Okay, I'm going to use these real thin pieces. These are about um, five sixteenths wide by eighth inch thick. Now, I'm going to run them at a 45 all the way through here. The walls upstairs, downstairs, both sides. Now, to get your reference mark, for all you people who are new at this, okay, I got a little small piece that I had trimmed off to go in the very bottom corner. I want the bottom corner here facing me. So that when I do this, it'll, it'll come out right. Now, when you put the, since the front of the house will be facing away from you, when you go to put your left in, left and right sides on, you gotta make sure that you also have, you start in that same corner and go up this way. Same way over here, it'll still come up like this, start up your new your top, and then come down. And all your edges should line up. Okay, so what I do here, I'll take my piece, make sure I'm above the little lip here, because I don't want the wood to extend past that lip, otherwise it's not going to work. Now I'm going to trim it off later on my table saw. That's a little tricky to do, but I'm going to set it right here with a flat edge against my corner. Okay, like so. I like to use mechanic pencils because they give me the right size line. And I put a line there so I'll know right where the edge is. Okay. Take my speed square. You only, if you do it right, you only need to do this once. Okay, I'll set it along the edge. Right here, my 45 degree edge. A 90, 45. Put it on the edge like so. I'll slide this down to the bottom edge of the ruler is touching the mark that I had made. Okay, I get it right down there. Close as I can get it without going over. Hold it down, take my mechanics pencil, and draw me a line. Now that's my reference line for the whole puzzle. So then I take my little piece, and where is it? Ah, here's my glue. I like to use this stuff here. I'm going to close up picture of it called Rapid Fuse. Sorry, everything's backwards when I'm looking at it. Rapid Fuse. 
It bonds in like three seconds. Okay, either that or I've got the Gorilla Glue, glue brand. It works just as well, too. So, unscrew it. And only you need a little small drop. This is a small piece. Take that. I'll set it on there. Make sure it goes right along that edge. Just like so. And then I'll let that dry and that'll be my stabilizer for the rest of the project here. Now when you get to your door or your windows, your windows won't be too bad because you can use a, uh, either a cutoff tool or you can pre-measure it and cut it the right way you want the first time because you've got, I haven't got none of the windows assembled, but you'll have interior trim that goes around it as well. You want to try not to get too much of a gap in there. You'll butt your, tri your wall pieces, your tongue and groove, will butt up against the wall trim. So it might be a good idea to put your interior wall in frame first or leave it till later and put it over it and then cover up the inside front door. I've already got this one disassembled. Okay. Okay, now, depending on which way you want this done, either your door will open in or your door is going to open outwards. I'm going to have mine opening out. So there's a little lip down here that the door butts up against. So if I put it on the front this way, the door is going to open inside. If I open it this way, the door will open outwards depending on which way you want to do it. The line's going to be opening outwards. Okay, so the lip on top, the finished frame part will go to the inside. Let me back up a little bit here. So I don't have up and down remote, so I have to deal with it. So I'll set it on here. Okay, now it's going to be bigger than that because you got to accommodate for the thickness of the log from the outside. Let it run flush up against, up, make sure you up near the top, so that you have the clearance on the bottom. Okay. Take your mechanics pencil, trace around your outside of your door frame. That'll give you an outline of the door, where the molding reaches the inside. So that's a guideline to where you want your edges to be for your uh, inside wall tummy and groove. Okay, now, see, this is already glued. It's pretty strong stuff. And this is basically my main glue I use to put the whole thing together. Except in the shingles, I use hot glue for shingles. Okay, now, you'll take it, put your next piece, like that, next piece, next piece, so on and so forth. You'll have a stable edge to glue to, and it'll stay at a 45. Now, of course, you'll be cutting a lot of these. I'm going to try to get it to where I put seams in it, So, which means once I get further up, and it denotes a longer piece, but I can split it into two. And I'll split it into two, you'll have two seams, one seam. Then two seams, one seam, so on and so forth. Either that or you can leave it long and just run it wild and have no seams. Okay? I haven't decided which way to go yet. Now I've got a bigger, wider piece here. Okay? as close in as I can get, okay? This is a little bit wider. I don't know if you can tell the difference, but see, it's a little bit wider. This piece is about half 
an inch wide by an eighth inch thick. Okay, so now I'm going to use this as wide plank flooring on the bottom floor and the second floor. All this pine and groove, tongue and groove, will be on both walls, the ceiling, and the, the roof ceiling as well. I plan on putting some beams in the ceiling to make it actually look like a log cabin roof. Now with the wide plank flooring, okay, you'll have a little bit of an edge on each, each of the sides with exception to the back, which is all open for you to have access to the home. <coughs> now I'm going to run these horizontally with the floor. It makes it look large. If you run it vertically, up and down, back to front, it'll look shorter. It won't give you as much depth. Whereas if you run it the other way, it gives you the more 